Hello and welcome to my channel. Here's another landscape because people like when I draw landscapes. And it's a nice scene by the river with some interesting trees in the foreground and some nice reflections in the background. The drawing has a lot of interesting details and textures to entertain the eye. Now one of the things that I always say in my videos whether I'm drawing portraits or landscapes is that if you want a realistic drawing, in addition to the range of value, you also need a variety of textures. And to get those textures, you often don't need to put in that much effort, and you don't need to draw every single line and every single dot. What you need to do is let the pencil work for you. Uh, what do I mean by that? Simply that whenever you draw, your pencil, in a combination with the surface of the paper, the grain of the paper, will naturally produce a bit of texture, especially if it's a charcoal pencil or a softer graphite pencil. So let's say you were drawing a portrait and you want to, to create a realistic looking skin. You don't need to draw every pore and every wrinkle. You just let the pencil work for you and you use that wonderful texture. Now if you want a softer, smoother skin, you just blend it a little bit more. The same thing goes for drawing landscapes. If you want to create a rough texture, like a tree bark or a forest floor, then um, you can use that rough texture that your pencil will produce. And if you want softer textures, like for example on the surface of the water or in the distance where things fade because of the atmospheric effect, you use a lighter, harder pencil or you simply use your blending tools like brushes and tutilians and q-tips to soften that texture. Now, let's get on with this drawing. I'm starting with a graphite pencil sketch as usual. Normally, I wouldn't do a very elaborate sketch for a landscape. But I have a lot of these trees in the foreground and I need to put them down so that I can have a better idea about my composition. And also because I have a lot of these trees here and because some of them are in front of the others, that'll help me create some depth and distance in my drawing. I lightly went over the sky with a large brush just to put down a little bit of value, but I'm not going to do much to it. It's mostly going to be covered with branches. I'm working on the tree line on the opposite side of the river and I'm just going to draw some generic trees there. I can't really make out too much in my reference photo. So I'm going to simplify that a little bit and let my pencil do the work. Just creating some suggestions of canopies there in the distance. They are also going to be reflected in the water here and I'm using a vine charcoal stick here to draw this water. I'm using vine charcoal because it's soft and easily blended and it will allow me to create a smoother surface of the water which I can later easily manipulate to put in some uh, darker or lighter value or erase to create some highlights and ripples in it. So when I'm drawing a reflection like this, what I want to do is uh, roughly match what's above the surface of the water and at the same time uh, make the image a little bit distorted because of the ripples in the water. So if I feel like I need a little bit more value, I just add a little bit more charcoal. And here I'm using a pencil eraser to pull some highlights in the water and make that reflection a little bit more interesting. So I'm just adding a few ripples and a few lighter areas here in those reflections. And hopefully 
once I'm done it will look fairly realistic. But like I said it's easier to do this with vine charcoal than with a charcoal pencil because vine charcoal is easier to blend and it produces a smoother smoother surface, smoother area rather. So here in the foreground we're going to have some dried grass on the forest floor and maybe some dry needles because there are some coniferous trees here as well. And I'm starting to work a little bit on the roots of this first tree in the foreground. <coughs> We have a mixture of trees here. I'm not an expert, but I can see several different types of trees. And the first one has a black and white tree bark that kind of looks like a birch, but I'm not sure what it is. And some of the other trees here are coniferous trees, judging by their branches and those clusters of needles that I see in my reference photo. So I'm trying to put down some of these darker areas here. I'm just scribbling a little bit taking it easy I don't want to I don't want to try to do too much all at once so I'm just trying to imitate the appearance of the tree bark with these sharp contrasts of lighter and darker areas so I have some of these darker patches but in addition to that I also have some of these uh, lines going from one side to the other so horizontal lines and I also need to keep in mind that my light source is coming from the left side so I'm gonna be shading the right side of the tree a little bit more So I'm pretty happy with the texture I achieved, especially around the roots. I want that rough texture with a lot of contrast. Because this first tree in the foreground is going to have the most contrast because some parts of the tree bark are lighter and almost white while others are pretty dark. In, by the way, in case you're wondering what pencils I'm using, I'm using these woodless charcoal pencils and I mostly used a medium charcoal pencil, but I also used a soft one as well uh, to go over some of these darker areas just to, just to get a little bit more dark value. There is a slight difference between these uh, medium and soft charcoal pencils. They feel pretty much the same, but the medium ones are just a little bit harder and just a little bit lighter in value. The soft ones are a little bit softer, they are a little bit darker, they allow you to produce pitch black areas. And they can also be moved around and the charcoal can be moved around and blended a little bit more easily. Or at least it feels that way. Uh, the brand of the pencils that I'm using is Warrison, but I've used other pencils as well so it's not really important to me. The reason why I'm using woodless charcoal pencils is because they're easier to sharpen. They only break when I use a really really dull old sh sharpener, but normally they hardly break at all. 
so much easier to sharpen than the normal uh, charcoal pencils. So I'm still working on this tree line here in the middle and you can see that the reflections are also coming along nicely and how, uh, how smoother the reflection is so that it looks like the surface of the water in comparison to the tree line and especially the the forest floor in the foreground where there's going to be a lot of texture and detail so back to what I was saying uh, in my intro you have to let the pencil work for you and allow it to produce its textures it's just an easier and smarter way to draw naturally it requires a little bit of experience and you have to get to know your materials a little bit more but once you do uh, you always find easier ways to create realistic looking drawings so now I'm doing a little bit more work on these branches here and as for drawing branches as usual for me this can be a little bit complicated and tedious uh, the quickest and easiest way to draw them would be to twist your pencil and just go with the flow trying to create curved uh, tapering lines but it's not always easy because they grow in all kinds of directions and their size and their length and thickness varies so sometimes I just have to do it the harder and slower way by drawing every single twig well not every single twig but almost just to just enough to create an illusion like I drew every single twig but like I said the thing to remember is to make them all twisted and growing in all kinds of directions and tapering as they grow and I'm trying to imitate these leaves or clusters of needles at the end of those branches and twigs because I want some foliage there as well now I'm going to be moving on to this largest tree in the foreground and its texture it's also going to be the most complicated and it's going to have the largest amount of detail on it as well I'm starting with the roots here because I have some very dark areas here and I'm gonna take it from there for this I like my pencil to be fairly sharp because it gives me more control when scribbling and when trying to produce nice textures Now I'm going to move on to the shading of the tree and try to create something that looks like tree bark. <coughs> so my approach will be fairly simple. I'm going to shade the tree first and then work on the details later. But as I shade I will be producing some rough texture and I won't blend all of it in so some of it will remain I want some of that rough texture even when I start putting some detail on top of it but my initial shading naturally has to be consistent with the light source which is coming from the left so the right side is going to be a little bit darker but you'll notice that the side of the tree trunk all the way to the right is going to be just a bit lighter than the area which is in the middle and slightly to the right of the middle that's because we have some light coming from the other side as well 
So you have to understand that the tree trunk is a round object and we are shading it like a cylinder. So the light source is going to be making the left side of it a lot lighter. But even though the right side is generally a little bit darker overall, the part in the middle is the darkest, or not in the middle, but slightly to the right of the middle is the darkest because it's furthest away from the light source. And then just a bit further away to the to the right side we're going to make it a little bit lighter because of some because of the light which is coming from the other side and now I'm working on the tree bark and trying to make it look as realistic as possible I'm going to be doing this with a combination of both of my pencils, both the medium and the soft one. I'm going to be using the medium one for these lighter parts of the trunk. And I'm going to be going over the, the ones in the darker area with a softer charcoal pencil. So I'm just trying to imitate the appearance of the tree bark. It's not that difficult, I guess. I have a lot of experience drawing trees. I used to do that a lot when I was younger. So as you can see now, I'm covering the middle part and the part slightly to the right a little bit more with a little more value and I can always blend it a little bit with a brush but very gently because I don't want to ruin the texture I created I want some of it to remain and now I have to do a little bit more work on these branches and the more twisted and the more unpredictable the way they twist is um, the more organic and realistic they will look. So I'm trying to add some more density to the foliage as well as the branches. And to help me with that I'm gonna, also going to be using a tortillion and vine charcoal a little bit later. Because that will help me create more volume and get a little more coverage. But so far so good. I've pretty much done the first half of the drawing, the left half, and so far it looks very good and very realistic. That's what I was going for. And we can feel that this thick large tree to the right is slightly in front of the one to the left and that both trees are in front of the river and the tree line in the background. So that's the depth that I'm trying to create in my drawing. And if there's anything I'm particularly proud about in this drawing it's going to be that depth and of course the textures that I talked about. But it was a challenging drawing I tried to do it the first time and I wasn't really happy with the way it was going so I threw it away and that was even done on a smaller piece of paper I tr initially tried to do that on a smaller format but then a few days later I decided to go back to it because I really liked the scene and I decided to do it anyway and it turned out to be a good idea because it's a really nice scene. So now as you can see I'm moving on to the trees in the background here. Uh, we're gonna have a few more trees growing, growing very close to one another and uh, with a lot of their branches overlapping. 
So even though I'm doing this portion in portion of the video in time lapse, it actually took quite a bit of time. This was one of my longer drawings because I think it took almost five hours to do, or close to five hours. Normally most of my drawings take a little bit less, but that depends on the complexity, obviously. There are more and less complex ones. I'm using vine charcoal for some of this foliage here because I want to be able to cover it a little bit more quickly and to create a little more density. It's just an easier tool for drawing than the charcoal pencil, but I'm using a combination of both because they both have their advantages. So the tree line in the background is almost done. I'm, I don't really have to do anything else to it. I mean, it's pretty much where it's going to be ending. The rest of it won't really be visible because of all, the, all of these trees here. And the same goes for this water as well and the reflections. So I'm mostly done with that. And now I'm just going to be focusing on the foreground and these trees here and the and the forest floor closer to us, closer to the viewer. But I just have to put in the work here and draw all of these branches and the foliage. I need enough density there. I, I need more branches and twigs. And here you can see that I picked up my soft charcoal pencil because I felt I needed a little bit more value in some of these details and areas. And just putting down that soft charcoal pencil for the darkest, darkest details. To give uh, that tree bark even more of a 3D look. And I'm going to be doing the same thing with the with the tree here on the right, which has a similar tree bark. I'm going to put one more here in the background, just to fill in that space. I'm going to do the same thing with the tree bark. First I'm going to shade it a little bit and leave some of that rough texture. I'm going to shade the dark side, the, the one that's facing away from the light source a little bit more and then I just go back in with a pencil, with a softer charcoal pencil to add a little bit of that uh, texture. And you can see how uh, rough that tree bark looks as though I put in a lot of work but the truth is that it was done fairly quickly. The part of the drawing that took the most time and effort were probably the branches because I have to be careful about their shape and I have to make sure that they taper otherwise they won't look very realistic. Here on, on the right, all the way on the right, I decided to add a dirt path just to make that part of the paper a little more interesting. And I'm also going to add a few of these longer shadows here. Because I didn't really know how to fill that lower right portion of the paper, so I decided to add that dirt path. Maybe it's a... Maybe it's a path along the river that goes along the river or something like that and these shadows will make the drawing a little more interesting. My light source is coming from the left side anyway so it's fine. I'm just going to be adding a little more texture and detail 
to the ground. I'm going to be working a little bit more on these roots and maybe adding some roots here and there as well. Maybe like they're popping out of the ground in order for them to kind of pop out I need to shade them I need to shade them as well make sure that they have shadow I want to make it feel like there's some uh, dried grass and uneven ground there and like this is a dirt road on the right that's uh, partly covered with grass now I'm just adding a little more detail on the canopies and the branches and just adding a little more texture on the ground but these are the finishing touches Just refining the appearance a little bit. Uh, I didn't really like the shape of this bow here. When I uh, when I just don't feel like I like a, a certain shape, I just have to change it. Even though I didn't have anything of a sort in my reference photo, I just wanted a different looking shape and I decided to add another bow here extending be behind that tree in the foreground so I'm gonna add a few more branches here coming coming out from the other side and maybe a few more twigs and branches here but this is just me basically adding some shapes which are more to my liking it's not really in the reference photo it's not really necessary it's just some minor changes I've removed the tape and the drawing is sprayed with a fixative I'm going to sign it in the lower right corner here where my signature won't bother anybody hopefully maybe just make this area a little bit darker so that's it the drawing is finished now we're gonna stop and have a look at the detail and the textures uh, like I said to produce a variety of textures all you need to do is let the pencil work for you and the variety of textures is almost as important as a range of value I've zoomed in a little bit so that you can see more of these details and textures. As you can see, pretty detailed, realistic drawing. Thank you for watching. I have lots of other landscape drawings. Make sure you check those out as well. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.